All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first section. It's greatest common factors in factor by grouping. How many of you guys remember the term or hearing the term GCF before? Okay, so about half of you. So the greatest common factor is basically the biggest number that goes into both numbers, okay? So they're the smaller numbers that make up that big number, but they're the biggest one that they share, all right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write each number as a product of primes. And I'm going to use a factor tree. I know it seems old school, but it's kind of like that no-fail method, like no matter what, if you do it this way, you'll catch every number that they share, so you'll always get the greatest common factor. Once we write them all the product of primes, we're going to identify what common primes that each of those numbers share. And once we see, oh, they share number two, or they share a two and a three, we're going to gather them together and multiply them, and that's your greatest common factor, okay? Will all of you guys have to use a factor tree? No. Will sometimes you use a factor tree and sometimes you won't? Sure. Or some of you might use a factor tree every time. It's totally up to you, okay? So what we have first, let's look at 28 and 40. They say, find the greatest common factor. Some of you guys can look at 28 and 40 and say, GCF is 4, and just know it. And that's fine. But some of you are like, I'm not too sure, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them down into primes. So looking at 28, what we're going to do is we're going to make a factor tree. A factor tree can be broken up in multiple ways, all right? What are any two numbers that multiply to be 28? 2 and 4. 2, no, not 2 and 4. What? 4 and 7, okay? Or 2 and 14, right? That's kind of what you're going with. So this is what, if she saw 2 and 14, she would write a 2 under this branch and a 14 under this branch, right? I heard 4 and 7, so I'm going to go with 4 and 7. So I'll write a 4 and a 7 under that branch. Once you start with your initial primes, then you go to each of those little guys and break them down. So can, like you do 2 and, um, two and 14, remember 2 and 14. Can 2 break down any for her? No, but can 14 break down? It sure can. 14 can break down in 2 and 7. Us that wrote it this way, can 4 break down? Sure. What does 4 break down to? 2 and 2. And then can 7 break down? No. So once you get each of the branches broken down to a prime, you're done. Okay? So what does that mean? It means 28 can be written as 2 times 2 times 7. All right? We're going to use the exact same thing with 40. What are any two numbers that multiply to be 40? 4 and 10. And honestly, I go that direction. Anytime I see that 0 at an end, I know 10 is one of the factors, right? So we'll do 4 and 10. You might have done 5 and 8, 2 and 20, right? Multiple ways to do it. Then you look at each branch. Can 4 be broken down? Yeah, we just did that, right? 4 is 2 and 2. What about 10? 2 and 5. You got it. And notice 2, 2, 2, and 5 they're all primes. We can't go any further. All right? So once you break each of your numbers down by primes, you just say, well, what numbers do they share? Do they each have a 2? Yes. Do they each have a second 2? Yes. Do they each have a 7? No. And does 28 have any other factors? No. And so what do they share? They share 2 and 2, but what we do at the end is we multiply them together. Okay? So the GCF is going to be a, the product of what we circle. 2 times 2 equals what? 4. Do you have to do all this, especially 28 and 40? No. Some of you guys have very good number sense. You can just look at it and know that 4 is the GCF. But sometimes it gets a little bit tricky and we forget that there's another 2. So really, 8 is the GCF, you know? So this is kind of the no-fail method. But please know that you can go straight to 4 if you, if you want. The only thing there is, if you do it and you don't show any work and it's wrong, I can't give you partial credit. I'm a big cheerleader. I like to give you credit for what you're doing. So even if you know to do a factor tree and you do that part right, but then the GCF part's wrong, you're going to get partial credit for knowing that you went in the right direction. All right. What do we do if there's three? The exact same thing, but just three times. Okay. What are the only, what's the only way 15 breaks down? Three and five. And this is what I'm talking about. Some of you are like, I don't know. Get that calculator before you come to class and start taking 15, divide it by 1, 2, 3, see what goes into it, right? And what's nice about 15 is that 3 and 5 are already primed. We don't need to break them down any further. What about 18? 3 and 6, you got it. Can we break 3 down any further? No, but what about 6? 3, three and 2, all right? 
and then you go to 66. He's kind of an odd one, but do you guys remember that rule that any time a number repeats, what's guaranteed to be a factor of 44, 55, 66? 11. 11. And what number is it? The other number, right? So we have 6 and 11. Can 6 break down? Yep, we already just did that, right? 3 and 2. And then 11 is a prime, all right? Once you have them broken down, you just ask, start with the very first number. Does everybody have a 3? Yeah. Yep. We have a 3 here. We have a 3 here. And we have a 3 there. So for sure the GCF has a 3 in it, right? Then you start with 15. Does everybody have a 5? No. Can 15 share anything more? No. So even though 18 and 66, they both have that 2, 15 doesn't. So it can't be a GCF of all three, right? So in this case, the GCF is just what number? Three. You got it. Is that okay? You guys remember doing this? Like, I mean, you've had to do GCFs before, like prior to this class. What might be new is variables. Like, how do you even begin to find a variable for, or a GCF for a variable? I am going to show you the long way once, and then I'm just going to tell you the shortcut. So, in Math 112, so anybody take Math 112 here at Lucy Clark? Okay, a handful of you guys. In Math 112, you learned what an exponent meant. An exponent means what? Like, x to the third means what? That's long ago. <laughs> a number to the third, but what does a number to the third mean math-wise? Times, it, like times itself three times, exactly. So, guys, if we have x to the third, we have x times x times x, right? We have three x's in a row there. So keeping that pattern alive, what is x to the seventh? x times itself seven times. You got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then x to the fifth is just five times. All right. So believe it or not, guys, that's technically their factor trees, right? How do you break x to the third down? x times x times x. So what's the whole idea of the GCF? You start with your first number, x to the third, and it has an x. But doesn't everybody else have an x? It sure does. And an x to the third has a second x. Doesn't everybody else have a second x? Yep. And everybody has a third x, right? So what do they share, guys? They share three x's. Do they share more than that? No. Even though x to the fifth and x to the seventh have more x's, x to the third doesn't have any more to share. So guess what the GCF is? You got it. x to the x times x is x to the third. Okay? So what is your shortcut? You're like, what if I gave you x to the 99th, x to the 100th, x to the 101? Are you going to want to draw all those out? No. The shortcut is the lowest exponent is always your GCF, because that's all the more he has to share, right? X to the third can't share X to the fifth, because he only has three X's. So the lowest exponent, so lowest exponent is GCF, okay? So that will just make it quick. So if you ever see variables and they all match, just grab the one with the lowest power, and you'll have the GCF. Okay. If we have a problem like that and we just write a uh, 3, will that give me... Oh, no, it has to be x to the third. So they have three x's that they share, but 3 is not the number. Does that make sense? So it's x to the third. All right, so let's look at this one. 15 x to the third, 8 into the fourth. What it's doing there is just combining what we just did. So we know how to break numbers down. We know how to break variables down. So that all you do is put them together. So 15 and 8, let's start with those. How does 15 break down? We just did it up here. 3 and 5, you got it. And how does 8 break down? 2 and 4, and then you have to go a second time, right? Because 4 can be broken down to 2 and 2. So let's just start with the numbers. What numbers do they share? None. None, right? Okay, so we'll come back to that. Like, okay, well, maybe they don't share any numbers, but maybe they share some variables. Do they share the variables even? No. No. So be careful because I don't want you to kind of use my rule over there that the lowest x third wins. It has to be the same variable, right? Like, so even though x to the third is lower than n to the fourth, x to the third is not the GCF, right? Because n and x are not the same. So we look at these and we're like, neither term shares anything. And it's kind of a lie. What number is, goes into every number is the number one. one. So the GCF, guys, is just one. So it's almost like a trick question. So basically, if you can't find anything they share, 
one is hidden in there, right? I mean, I guess when we do our factor trees, we could be putting one off to the side, but that would just be um, kind so of a So the variable cluster. has to match. In order for it to, yeah. So like, okay. if you go over here to the next one, you see C and W. So there's two in both of them. It doesn't matter. It right. has to be one. Okay. Yeah. So let's look. We have 12C and 15 to the W third. So let's do 12 and break him up. What's he going to be? But what's anything that multiplies to be 12? Three and four. And then three can't break down any. But what does four break down to? Two and two. And then don't worry about the C right now. We'll come back to it. What about 15? We've done it twice already. That's three and five. Is everybody okay with that? All right. So let's start with the number part. Is there any number that they all <coughs> both share? Three. Three and only three, right? So they both share three. And then once you do that, guys, behind it, we will tack on any variable if it shares it. But notice one has a C and one has a W. They're not the same. So even though they both have variables, they don't have a GCS variable, okay? So three is just the GCS there. You guys okay with that? Good, all right. All right, so now we're finally going to get to one where they have both a number and a variable that they share. All right. So 20, guys, what are any two numbers that multiply to be 20? 10 and 10. 10 and 2. How does 10 split up? 5 and 2. 2 is already broken down. We can't do anything more with him, okay? Leave C squared alone, come to 25. What's the only way 25 splits up? 5 and 5. All right. So when you look at 20 and you look at 25 and you compare their primes, what's the only number that they both share? Five. A five. Okay. So we know the GCF at least has a five, but it might have a variable as well. And what do you notice about both their variables? They're both C's. Okay. So we know C will be part of it. The question is what power of C are we going to have? C to the second. C squared. Absolutely. Because remember, that lowest power wins. All right. Any questions there? Okay. So even though they have two parts to them, the number, the coefficient in front, and the variable in back, just approach them each separately. So as scary as this looks, just do one at a time. Just focus on the number first, then just focus on the u's, and then just focus on the x's, and then the y's. Just do everything separately. So let's break down 27. What's the, uh, one of the ways 27 breaks down? 3 and 9. And then 3 is already broken down, so 9 breaks down to what? 3 and 3. You got it. All right. Leave the variables alone for now. Go jump over to 18. How does 18 split up? 3 and 6? 3 is already broken down. How can we break 6 down? 3 and 2. I mean, you're doing adding, right? So 3 plus 3 is 3, but 3 times 2. And that's why I said feel free to have calculated like 6 divided by 2, 6 divided by 3. All right. So looking at 27 and 18, what do you guys notice that they share? Two threes. This three and this, it doesn't really matter, but two threes and two threes. Is that okay? So remember when they share more than one number, we're going to multiply them. Okay? So we have three times three. If you want to go directly to nine, you can. I kind of do like a step before I get to my answer, right? So they both share a three and a three. And the three, I need to circle one up there, right? So we'll show three. And then let's look at the variables. Okay, I know there's a lot going on, but right behind these three and threes, we're going to just tack on some variables. So, do they both have u's? Yes. Yeah. Which u is going to be the what they share though? Mm -hmm. U squared. You got it. So just tack that on behind it because when you're smudged together like that, that's multiplication, right? Do they both have y's? No. No, it's a trick question, right? So just because he has a Y and the other one doesn't, it's not part of the GCF, all right? Do they both have X's? Yes. yes. What do they share? Four. X to the fourth. You got it. So after you kind of like collect everything that they share, make sure you multiply it. And so my math lab on this one, they might say, although your answer is correct, it's not in the correct form. Why? Because you know what three times three is. What's three times three? Nine. Nine, and that's kind of what they're looking for you to do, all right? So the final answer is going to be 9u squared x to the fourth. Is that all right? So break the numbers down individually, get that number that they share, then look at variables one by one, and then pull them all together at the end. So again, even though like the last next one looks like it has a ton of stuff going on, let's just focus on the 28, 
Just focus on the 12, okay? What are any two numbers that multiply to be 28? Four and seven. We did it in the very first problem, right? So if you can utilize that, feel free to take advantage, all right? Four and seven. We know that four can break down to two and two. And seven's already a prime. Are we okay with that? So we're going to leave the variables alone for now, and we're going to move over to 12. What are any two numbers that multiply to be 12? Three and four, two and six, however you want to do it, right? So we'll do three and four. Three will stay alone because he's already a prime. Four will break down to two and two. Is that okay? All right, so let's start kind of building our GCF down here. What numbers do those two numbers share? Four, exactly. So like, you know how you went right to it? Feel free to go right to it. If you're someone that likes to kind of build on, you're like, okay, they have this two and this two, and then you can put two times two, absolutely. So they do have the two twos that they share, which is four. I, I always kind of build mine. All right, and then vary by, variable by variable, see what they share. Do they both have Ws? Yeah. They do, but what's holding us back? Three. Just that single W, right? So we'll have that one W. And then like you said, they don't have a U, right? The first guy has a U, but the second one doesn't. So we're not going to even worry about U being part of our GCF. And they both have Vs. What's going to be our V GCF? The fifth. the fifth. You got it. So at the end, guys, just make sure you pull it all together. What do we have? Four W V to the fifth. Does that look all right? Okay. Hmm. All right. Are there any questions on finding GCF? And I know it's a lot, but like... This is really the base. I mean, if we can get this, the other stuff is just going to build from it, okay? So if there's no questions, and what's nice, guys, if you do have questions, one, you can ask them later when I'm walking around, or two, I am going to post this. So if you didn't catch something in this half hour, you can always go check it later. Well, if it's squared like W and the U squared together, it doesn't matter. You can, you can talk away the, v, the U if you want to. Right here. So like... She's talking about how we have the W times the U to the third where they're multiplied together. Absolutely. If he does not share that thing, because all of these are kind of shoved together, it's all yeah. multiplication, and so it is, but you can kind of separate them. Like if you were doing a factor tree, you could have a factor for W and a factor for U. So you are kind of separating them, but I kind of like how you said it. If they don't share it, you kind of toss it to the okay. side. You don't need it. Okay. So next what we're going to do is, um, now that you know what GCFs are, we're going to start factoring out GCFs. And these key words are very important because, honestly, I find that everybody knows how to do it, but they don't know which question is being asked. So up here at the top, when it says, find the GCF, that just means, tell me what the GCF is. What is it? And that's what we did with these nine or eight problems. Down here, though, notice it says, factor out the GCF. So what does that mean? It means you have to do an extra step. You not only have to find the GCF, but you need to pull it out and tell me what's left, okay? So how are we going to do this? I am going to kind of do more right now than what I normally would do, because um, we're going to initially be able to look at GCF and kind of just do it quickly without having to do our factor trees. Um, so 15 and 10, what would be the GCF of 15 and 10? Five, yep. And say you don't even know it, go over here and do factor trees for them. You know what I mean? So we have three and five and five and two, all right? So we know our GCF, they both share what? Five. What about the variable? What do M and N squared share? M. Just a single N. Is everyone okay with that? No questions? Okay. So if the problem said find the GCF, we would say five N and we would be done, right? But the problem says factor out the GCF. That means we got to pull it from the first term and pull it from the second term and say what's left, okay? So it, um, do you guys remember the, the distributive property? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? We're undistributing, if that's a word. I don't know if that's a word. So factoring is undoing distribution, all right? So what are we pulling out? We're going to pull out this 5n, okay? So let's do it right below it. We'll do 5n out here. But we got to say, hey, what is less than? If we pull a 5m out, what is left? Okay? Well, we started with the 15 and we divided out of 5. What's still left? A 3. You kind of go to your factor tree, right? We had pulled out a 5, but what still makes 15 total? 3. So when you distribute, you're multiplying. When you factor, you're dividing. Okay? So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 
All right, then focus on your variables. How many ends did we have to begin with? Just one, right? How many did we pull out? One. So are there any ends left with that three? There sure isn't, okay? And then what sign are we going to have? A positive divided by a positive is still a positive. All right, and it's kind of awkward at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll feel good, and you can always check by distributing, all right? So then we're going to do it a second time. What's 10 divided by 5? 2. So that means there's a 2 left. And you had two ends there, but you only pulled out one. So how many ends remain? One end. One end. And you close off your parentheses. And you're like, oh gosh, Mom, this is brand new. I don't know if I did it right. You can always check. How do you check? You check by distributing, right? So what's 5m times 3? Well, what's 5 times 3? 15m, right? And then what's 5 times 2? 10. What's m times m? m squared. You guys just factored out the GCS, okay? So it's one of those things that sometimes I go, even if you don't know if you're doing the right number, get an answer there and then check it with your distributive. If you're off, then go back to that part where you're off, okay? If the multiplication doesn't add up, that means your division didn't go right. All right. So let's look at this next one, 20 and 15. Does anybody know what number is the GCF between 20 and 15? Say you don't know, go off to the side and do factor trees, right? So 20, how does 20 split up, guys? Five and four? So will that be negative five and negative four? We'll talk about the negative in a second. <laughs> I'm so glad you're already on this Yes, we'll talk about When I do factor trees, I don't worry about the negatives yet, okay? Um, and then four is going to be two and two. And then the 15 is going to be what? 3 and 5. Is that all right? So GCF wise, what's the only number they share? The 5. And then guys, don't forget to go back to the variable. Do they share any variables? They sure don't. Okay. So how do you factor this out? She was already asking, what about that negative? Typically what they do, guys, is if your beginning guy is negative, they want you to factor out a negative. And they'll say that. They'll say, factor out the negative GCF. So what do you find the GCF to be? Five. But what do they really want us to factor out? A negative five. And they'll tell you. And if they don't tell you, factoring out a positive five is not incorrect, okay? So just make sure that what, what they're specifying, okay? Why is this important? Because when we start dividing by negatives, that starts changing our signs, right? A negative times a negative makes a positive and all that crazy stuff, okay? So we're going to factor out a negative 5 here and say what's left. All right. Well, number-wise, what's, tw what's 20? Let's just focus on the number. What's 20 divided by 5? 4. What's negative 20 divided by negative 5? Four, right? The, the positive is going to be there now, okay? And you can see the thing, you're like, no, I don't know. Just throw negative 20 in here, divide by negative 5, a positive 4 will back, pick up, okay? We did not touch those variables, so guess who's still traveling with us? The variable, right? Now, this is the important part. What's just number-wise, don't worry about the sign, what's 15 divided by 5? 3. But what's positive 15 divided by a negative 5? Negative 3. Anytime you factor a negative from a positive, you switch that sign, okay? So it'll be negative 3, and that, who's behind that 3 still? Y squared. I want to kind of, um, sorry, box in my answer so you know what the answer is. You're like, oh, I don't know if I did it right. <clears throat> Just go back and distribute, right? Negative 5 times a positive 4 is a negative 20. C times along. What do we know about a negative times a negative? It gives you a positive. 3 times 5 is 15. The y squared is right there. Okay? Last one, even though he's only variable, he's actually the easiest one. Okay? Looking at those two variables, y to the fifth, y to the seventh, who's the GCF? y to the fifth. Okay? So we're going to factor him out. So that means he goes in front. And we have to say what remains. Oh, you're like, well, y to the fifth was there. But you still have to show he was there, right? So what happens when you take y to the fifth divided by y to the fifth? It's no math you've ever done before. But what if I asked you, what's 4 divided by 4? One. Anytime you take a number and divide by itself, it's 1. So y to the fifth is a number. So y to the fifth divided by y to the fifth is just 
one. It's that placeholder there to show you, hey, why did the fifth was here at one point? What's a negative divided by a positive? It's still negative. You had seven y's, you took five away. So how many remain? Two. And you're like, oh gosh, I don't feel like that's right. Throw it y to the fifth back in there and see what happens. What's y to the fifth times one? Y to the fifth. What's y to the fifth times y to the second? Y to the seventh, okay? So what's nice, and I, again, I use the word, the adjective nice probably way more than you ever would in math class, right? But what's nice about factoring is you can always check. And I think I, I always like that sense of security, like, oh, I can check this stuff, okay? Are there any questions on the front? Does anybody need to take a break? This is something I forgot to mention um, during the syllabus is this is an hour and 50 minute class. I typically don't do a 10 minute break though because usually the second half is just a worksheet where you guys are free to get up and go to the bathroom. So I let you out 10 minutes early. So if we don't take a break, you're going to be getting out at 1040 versus 1050, which is nice for those that have like run across campus, okay? Today is a little bit longer of me chatting. Why? Because we had that first 30, 35 minutes of me going over the syllabus first. Typically we have plenty of time to take the lecture and do the worksheet, okay? Are there any questions on the first page? You guys feeling okay so far? Again, you guys can do the top and bottom, it's just knowing the words. So remember, find just means, here it is, but back out means, hey, I'm pulling it out and I'm telling you what remains, all right? So we're still factoring out GCS here. They're just trying to make them look scarier and scarier, all right? So looking at 15 and 24, some of you might be able to look at those two numbers and say the GCS is blank. If you can't pull a scratch piece of paper, do a factor tree up top, it doesn't matter. So how are 15 and 24 going to split up? Let's start with 15. Oops, he's kind of high. There he is. 3 and 5. Can't go any further with either one, can we? What about 24? 3 and 8. 8 goes further, 2 and 4, and then 2 and 2. But you quickly realize we don't even care that 8 goes further. I know that sounds bad, but 15 was just 3 and 5. It didn't have any 2s, so we don't really care that he keeps going that way. So looking at those two numbers, what's the only thing they share? 3. Okay? So let's do this. Let's write 3 over here. But behind them, let's do the variable part of the GCF, all right? Do they both have U's? Yes. yes, but what's the minimum? One. Just one U, right? So we'll put one U behind him. Do they both have V's? Yes. yes, but what's the minimum? One. one. Do they both have W's? No. no. Okay? So what does that mean? It means if they asked to find the GCF, we would be done. Three UV is the GCF. But they said factor out the GCF, so factor out means he's in front, and I'm going to put a parenthesis there to say what I'm factoring out. Remember, factoring is undistributing. It's undoing multiplication, so we're dividing. So what's 15 divided by 3? 5, right? And again, throw that in your calculator if you need to. You had 4 U's, you took 1 away. So we have U to the 3rd. You had 3 V's. You took one away. V squared. You had six W's. You didn't take any away. So how many are still there? Six W's, right? W to the six. That's a lot, right? But even at this point, you can kind of distribute and make sure you're on the right track, right? Three times five is 15. So that matches that, right? U times U to the third. One plus three is four. B times B to the second, there's three B's, right? And that W6 is still there. All right, whenever you factor out a positive, no signs ever change. So that minus sign in between will still be a minus sign. And then we have 24 divided by three is eight. We took out a U, he's gone. We took out a V, he's gone. We don't have any variables remaining with that eight. And again, guys, that is our final answer, but if you want to distribute that three UV back into both terms, you'll check and it'll match our original. Is that okay so far? All right, you're doing awesome. We're just gonna do the same thing. Over here at 24 and 16, does anybody know right off the bat what the GCF is? Don't know? Throw up some factor trees, right? So we have 24. Um, 24 is a number that splits up in a lot of ways. What's one way 24 splits up? Four, four and six. So four will be two and two. Six will be two and three. All those are primes, so we can't go any further. All right? 16. 
4 and 4. So all those are 2. 16 is made up of 4 twos. Isn't that crazy? Okay. So we'll, what do you notice about 24 and 16? They all have how many twos that they share? Three. And if you can see that right off the bat, it's not just circle kind of one by one, right? Like, like, oh, he has a two, and he has a two. He has a two, you know, that kind of idea. All right? So what's two times two times two? Eight. And be careful, because it's really easy to want to put six there. Why? Because you have three twos, and you kind of want to do that. But it's not three twos, three times two. It's three twos multiplied in a row. So two times two is four. Two is eight. All right. So that's going to be our number GCF. So let's put him in front up here, and we'll worry about the variables now. Notice he has a U and he doesn't. So U is not part of our GCF, right? So we're going to jump right to the W's. What is the lowest power W we can pull out? W to the sixth. What's the lowest power Y's we can pull out? Fourth. Perfect. And then even though he has a U, he doesn't, so that's not anything we could factor out. All right, remember when you factor out, you're undoing distribution. You're undoing multiplication. So you're dividing. What's 24 divided by 8? 3. Say if you put on your calculator, great. Say you're like, I don't have my calculator with me. Go back to the factor tree. It's the one number we didn't circle, right? It's what remains. So we have a 3 there. W to the 6. We've pulled them out completely. Why to the fourth? We can pull them out completely. So there's nothing that remains there. Is that okay? If you factor out a positive, signs don't change. So this is still a plus sign. What's 16 divided by 8? 2. Did we touch that U? Nope. So guess who's still there? The U. You had 7 W's. You took 6 out. So how many remain? One, one, right? Because you had seven, you took all but one out. And then you had y is a ninth, you took four out, you have five. And again, if you just want to double check by distributing that back in there, you can. Eight times three is 24, w to the sixth, y to the fourth. That first term is right. Eight times two is 16, the u is there, w to the sixth times w is seven w's, y to the fourth times y to the fifth is nine y. Okay, everything's right there. All right, so this last chunk, believe it or not, looks complicated, but it's probably the easiest of all the GCFs we've done, okay? As weird as it looks, guys, this is one term, and this is one term, okay? It's something times something. That's what a term is, something times something. So what do you notice that both of those share? X plus three. X plus three, all together, right? We don't know what X is. X could be two, so technically they share the number five, right? X could be zero. So technically, they share the number three. But you guys agree that both 5x plus 3 and y times x plus 3, they both share x plus 3. So guess where GCF is? x plus 3. So it's kind of weird because instead of factoring out like a single number, we're factoring out a binomial. Binomial meaning it has two terms. So this x plus 3 is what we're going to factor out. And we're going to put parentheses around it because we're going to say, hey, we don't know what x is, but whatever it is, we're adding 3 to it. So it goes together. You have to have parentheses around it. All right, this is the weird part. Look at your first term. You had 5 times x plus 3, but what did you factor out? The x plus 3. So who's the only guy that's remaining? The 5. I know it looks weird, but we pulled him out, so who's the only guy there? The 5. And then looking at this term, x plus 3, and you pull him out, so who's the only guy remaining? The y. Do you guys remember foiling? You just unfoiled. Right? We could just distribute. Actually, down here we'll do it even more. But x plus 3 times 5 gives you 5 times x plus 3. x plus 3 times y gives you y times x plus 3. It's like the mid version of foiling right there. All right, same thing over here. As ugly as it is, 3n squared n times the quantity a plus b minus a plus b. What's the GCF that both of those terms share? A plus B. Look how ugly it is, but that's your GCF. Okay? What do you do when you find your GCF? You pull them all the way to the front. Since it's a term where they're together, we've got to put parentheses together. Okay? So A plus B is our GCF that we're going to pull out in front. All right? But whenever you factor out in front, you have to say what remains. 
So looking at that first term, when you pull a plus b out, what's the only thing that remains? m squared n. You got it. It's, it's a mouthful, but you have it. 3m squared n. a plus b was a positive quantity, so we're not changing signs. So what's still there? A minus. And then you had one a plus b, but you pulled them out. What do you need to put there as a placeholder to show that he was there at one point? A one, right? We don't know what a plus b is, but it might be a number four. Four divided by four is one. So a plus b divided by a plus b is one. And again, if you want to check it, you just take that chunk and distribute it in. You have that first term, a plus b times one is a plus b. Don't forget that placeholder. What do I mean by that? If you start with a binomial two terms, the end part should still be a binomial. You can't just close that off because how do you show that a plus b was back there? You have nothing to prove it. All right, last one, guys. I cannot stress. It's the very first day, and you're probably learning the most important thing the very first day. Factor by grouping. Has anybody taken 116 before? Or even if you haven't taken 116, a version of it, like in college, or algebra like in your, your high school or something like that. Um, I know, right? Um, it's one of those things where like factoring, if you don't get factoring in the beginning, I know it sounds bad, but you're going to be struggling the rest of the semester. Like, So coming these first couple of weeks is probably the most important in any other week, and I hate saying that the first day. But if you can get factor by grouping, it will lead us into Wednesday's lesson, and Wednesday's lesson is probably by far the most important lesson, which is crazy. The first two lessons you're like, I'm screwed, you know? But luckily, everyone's here. I can only have, um, no, there's, there, there's one girl missing, wasn't there? So we have her, so hopefully she show, will get a hold of me. But well, how does factor by uh, grouping work? If you're given four things, right? We were never given four things. We are always given two things. So what do we know about four things? You can split them up into groups of two, okay? So factor by grouping, the very first thing is to make sure you factor out a GCF from the very beginning if all four of them have a GCF. If not, what you're going to do is you're going to just look at two things at a time and do what we just did, okay? So let's look at this first one. All four terms, so negative 3v is a term, negative 3x, uv, xu, right? They're all a term, but do they all share something? No. The first couple have a 3, but the other ones don't. Some of them have x, some of them, you know, they all kind of have like hodgepodge of sharing, but not one single number is in all four, okay? So factor by grouping says just look at the first two things. Let's just focus on these first two things. Guys, honestly, just ignore this. Does anything stand out to you with what they share? A negative 3, right? So guess what the GCF is of negative 3 being minus 3x? Negative 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the second half of this polynomial and we're just going to factor this guy like we were doing right above, okay? We're going to factor out the GCF and we're going to put parentheses of what's left, all right? So we're going to factor out a negative 3. And again, I almost want to put that there so like you're ignoring it, right? Like, that's a bad shadow though. Yeah, that's a little bit better. All right, so remember when you're factoring, you're dividing, okay? So what's negative 3 divided by negative 3? One. If nothing else was going to be there, you put a one. And honestly, if you put a one as a coefficient, I'm not the new teacher that counts you off. Um, but technically, we don't write coefficients of one x or one v, right? Like coefficients aren't usually one. So do you guys realize that a v will still be there, saving our spot? Okay. If you want to put one v, you can. But v is fine. We didn't factor him out, so the v is still there. All right. Second term. That's it's rolling now. It's not helpful. Second term, what's a negative 3 divided by negative 3? Positive 1, right? So what's going to happen to our sign? It's going to change to a plus. And you can put a 1x or just an x there. It's totally up to you. Okay? Again, if you put 1v, 1x, I'm totally okay with it. I don't know if my math lab takes it, so be careful. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be mad at you. All right. So then what we did there, we're just going to do here. Okay? It's just a baby version of it. Okay? So what do u, v, and x, u have in common? U. And it's a positive u, so I'm going to make a point to put a plus u here. If you guys don't put that plus there, a lot of times there's no sign and you never know, so you try to guess, right? So always put a plus u if you're factoring out a positive and a minus if you're factoring out a negative. All right, and again, just focus on that back half. What happens when you take the u out of the first term? What are you left with? V. What happens when you take the u out of the second term? What are you left with? X. 
And what do you notice we've done is we've turned it into a version of what we did up here. So when you do factor by grouping, what you're doing is you're factoring three times, right? We factor the first two, first term, we pull out a negative three. We factor the second term, we pull out a u. But what do you notice about this guy and this guy? What do they share? B plus, B plus x. It's just like we did x plus 3 up there and a plus b up there. Okay? So you have to factor a third time. And that's how you know you're doing it right. So if you're factoring back here and numbers and signs aren't working, you're not factoring out the right number. Because whatever is up here, you want this to match. And you're like, woohoo, celebrate the small things, all right? So b plus x is our GCF. All right? Factor them all the way to the front. B plus x, like that. But when you pull him out of that term, what's left? If you pull him out, what's left? Negative three. Oh, whoops, I'm breaking stuff, waking you up. Mm -hmm. If you pull him out of that term, what's left? A u. So what's left behind it? Negative three plus u. That is, if there was ever a term, I don't think it's the right word, un foiling, okay? How do you check this? You would foil it, right? What's b times negative 3? Negative 3v. Three What's b times u? uv. What's x times negative 3? Negative 3x. Three What's x times u? xu. So what we're doing today is the opposite of what you learned in 112, okay? We're undoing distribution. We're undoing foiling, okay? So we're just going to do the same thing here. Factor by grouping. Anytime you see four terms, just break them up into chunks of two. Look at those first two terms. Don't even worry about the second half. What can you pull out of y, u, and 7, u? You. Go ahead and pull him out in front, okay? When you pull him out in front, what is left from this term? One, uh, one y. You, you, you honestly can write one y. I'm completely fine with that. One y. <laughs> and then when you pull him out of the second term, what are you left with? Seven. Just a 7. Is that all right? And you can even double check that by four, distributing the u back. u times y is y u. u times 7 is 7 u. You did him right. Okay? Then you just do the same thing on the back half. What do you pull out of the second half? W. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So I'm going to make a point to put a plus w back here. And when I do that, what do you have left? Y. Y plus, plus seven. Yes. And like I said, it's math class. you got to just take anything you can to make you happy. That's when it feels good. You're like, I did it right. Y plus 7 matches that y plus 7. So I know now my GCF, my last GCF, is that y plus 7, right? I can pull him all the way out in front. But when I pull him from this term, what's left? U. And notice when I pull him from this term, I know it's a plus W, right? I'm not questioning the sign of W. I know it's a plus. So U plus W is your answer there. Is that all right? And you're like, I don't know if it's right. Check it. Foil it. You guys remember foil, double rainbow, whoever you had? Y times U is UY. What do the Y use? Y times W is WY. 7 times U is 7U, and 7 times W is 7W. So we know we've done it correctly. You guys are doing awesome. Just four more, and you know you have to do a worksheet today. I'm going to let you go. What? What? First day, we're already breaking rules the first day, guys. All right, we're going to look at these two terms and these two terms. Every problem on here is meant to be specifically uh, to challenge you, something different, okay? Not, not one is similar. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first two terms, and what do you notice? There's nothing that we can pull that works. So you're like, well, crap, okay. Well, what, well, I guess I can do what? Well, there's all these properties that you learn in Math 111 and Math 112. You can start rearranging them. That's called the commutative property, right? You can rearrange things and move them where you want them to go. So you're like, okay, 3xy plus 2 have nothing in common. But what has something in common with 3xy? Negative 3x. So why not put him right behind that, okay? So we're going to rearrange these guys. I'm going to write him as 3xy minus 3x. Is that okay? All right. This is where you kind of have to start being a fortune teller or psychic, try to predict the future. Do you guys agree that 2 and negative 2y are what remains? Okay. What order do you put them in 
kind of matters because we want whatever these facts are out of here what's left to match this. And what do you notice who's in front? The Y. So of these two terms, who should go in front? The Y, okay? Say you're like, you're a math teacher and you notice that. I don't notice that. That's fine. Put in 2 minus 2Y, two but you're going to notice things are going to be a little flip-flopped and you'll know to go back and rearrange those. That's fine. And you're not going to be wrong. You just have to catch it. All right. So I'm going to put minus 2Y plus 2. Now I have it where I can look at the first two terms, see what they share, look at the second two terms, and see what they share. Okay? So let's focus on, I'll put a little question mark. That didn't work. Okay. Let's focus on these. 3XY minus 3X. They both share a 3 and they both share an X. So the GCF is going to be a 3X. I'm going to pull that out in front. All right. Who's going to remain for that first term? Y. Y. And then don't be too quick to close off that parenthesis. How do we show that that 3x was there with a 1? And a minus 1, right? I didn't change my sign, so a minus 1. And again, a quick check is always to throw that 3x back in. 3x times y is 3xy. 3x times negative 1 is a negative 3x. All right. Look here. Do you guys agree that 2 is the obvious GCF, right? 2 minus 2 is the obvious GCF. But remember what I said. Whatever you have left, you want it to match perfectly with what we had before. And what we had before was a y minus 1. What do you notice about this sign? It's a plus. So how do you change a plus to a negative? You need to factor out a negative, okay? So anytime you need to change signs, make sure you factor out a negative. And usually when the first term is negative, it's hinting to you, hey, take out a negative 2, not a 2, okay? And that way, when we take out 2 divided by negative 2, it'll switch it to a minus 1, okay? And that's why I said it's important to put a plus W, a plus Y. We're going to make sure we put um, minus 2 there and close off our parentheses, okay? So we're not questioning whatsoever the sign of that 2. All right, math. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is just a positive 1, right? So who's the only guy left? So why? You took his coefficient out. He's just hanging there, right? But what's a positive 2 divided by a negative 2? Negative 1. And that's what we want. So again, you're like, Molly, you're a math teacher. This is my first day on the job here. What if I did a positive 2? Well, if you did a positive 2, you would quickly realize you'd have negative y plus 1. The exact opposite of what you want. Okay? So what's there is exactly the opposite of what you want take on a negative, right? We wanted a positive and then a negative, but this is a negative and a positive. So let's take on a negative and I'll make everything match, okay? And you'll get more practice with that. So if we wrote it the other way, would that be wrong? Well, yes, because you wouldn't be able to do the next step, because the next step they have to match in order to factor oh. them out, right? So if you wrote it the other way and you notice it, just be like, oh, I just need to make sure I take on a negative there, okay? So the last step, guys, is these need to be matching so that there are our GCFs that we can factor out, okay? We're going to factor out a y minus 1, and we're going to leave a 3x minus 2. Is that okay? y minus 1 from this first term, when it comes out in front, just leave us with a 3x. The y minus 1 from this term leaves us with that negative 2. We don't even have to question the sign of the 2. We know it's a negative. Is that okay? All right, so one thing I've been doing badly about, and luckily it hasn't caught us off guard yet, was the number one rule in factoring is always to look for a GCF, okay? And we haven't had one, luckily. I haven't messed you up too much. Right, 3, 2, 3, 2, they don't have anything in common, X, Y, Z. But what do you notice this next one has? What number uh, can we take out of all of Two. A two. So that's something that if you don't notice it and you start doing factor by grouping and you put it in my math lab, that common phrase, although your answer is correct, it's not in the correct form, right? So they hint to you, you're there, you just didn't take out enough, basically, all right? So what we have to do is we have to learn, we have to do what we did in the very beginning, the very first problem, take out a 2, and then do factor by grouping, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a 2 right here, and then my new polynomial. Are you guys in agreement that there's no variable that they all share? I thought it was a B for a second, but then that first term doesn't have a B. So we don't have any here. So 2 is the GCF, because I want to have that. So what's 4 divided by 2? Two? 2. 2, and we still have the AX. Are we okay with that? What's negative 4 divided by 2? Negative 2, and we still have the AB. 
What's negative 2 divided by 2? Negative 1. But since we have the bx there, we don't have to put the negative 1. We can just put negative bx. What's 2b squared divided by, well, let's not worry about the b squared. What's 2 divided by 2? One. 1. But who's there to have our placeholder? b squared. And again, guys, if you want to put the coefficients of negative 1bx and 1b squared, that's fine. Okay? What would I do right now if I was doing math lab? I would type a 2 right now in my math lab. So I do not forget that that GCF of 2, it was part of my answer. Because you'll get so into the, I know, like, you're like, oh, I'm getting so into math. But you will. You'll get so into this factor by grouping that you'll totally forget that we pulled the 2 out from the very beginning. Okay? On worksheets, what do I do? Instead of having to write the 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 the whole time, I do that. I say, okay, I know my final answer is going to have a 2 in front. But I don't want to have to worry about it when I'm doing the factor by group. Okay? So feel free to do that on your notes so you'll kind of remember to do that on the worksheet. All right. So now we have it, guys. We can look at these first two terms and come up with a GCF. 2ax minus 2ab. What do they share? An a and a 2, right? So again, this 2 that I pulled out has reduced the first polynomial to this. So we're going to say each part of answer, but now we're just focusing on this polynomial, okay? So there's a 2a that we can pull out of that first two terms. So let's do, go ahead and do that. Here's 2a. What will remain after we pull out 2a? X and then minus B. You got it. So 2ax, we took the 2, we took the a, it still has an x. Minus will stay a minus because we didn't take out a negative, right? We took out the a and the 2, but there's still a b. All right. got to be a little mind reader and psychedelic and all that stuff. We want a positive x in front and a negative b in back. But what do you notice? We have a negative and then a positive. We have exactly the opposite of what we want. So what do we need to factor out? A negative. Negative what? I don't know yet, but I know I need to switch those signs. So I'm going to make sure I factor out a negative something, okay? You guys see what I'm talking about there? So right here, we had a positive x and a negative b, but this turns negative and then that's positive. So we want to make sure that whatever we're taking out is a negative so we can flip-flop the sign, all right? What do these two things share in common? A b. A b. And only one b, right? So a negative b is what we're going to factor out there. Okay. When you look at these two terms, and you took negative b divided by negative b, who's the only guy left? X. X. When you took a positive divided by a negative, what did it switch your sign to? Um, negative. A negative, which we wanted. You had two b's, you took one out. So how many remain? One. Yes. Right? Celebrate the small things. What do you notice? The x minus b back there perfectly matches the x minus b in the front, right? So we're ready to do our final answer, but what do we have to remember our final answer has in front? A 2, right? So we have 2, but then what are we going to factor out of both of these? X. x minus b. I know it's really awkward, but that x minus b is going to come right there. Is that okay? When you take the x minus b out of the first term, what do you have? A 2a. Is that okay? And then when you take it out of the second term, what do you have? A minus b. So when we take them out of the first term, we have this 2a still hanging out. And when we take them out of the second term, we have the minus b. Whew. And believe it or not, you can still check that. In order to check it, you would have to let the 2 hang out and foil your 2 binomial. So like you do x times 2a to get 2ax, x times negative b to get negative bx. You'd foil all of those and then distribute the 2 back in and you'd have our original, believe it or not. Woo! Pull up. All right, guys. Only two more are doing awesome, and honestly, this next one's just like that one, okay? There's nothing different. There is a GCF, whoops, it's sliding. There is a GCF we've got to take out from the very beginning, but it's not a number, right? Because that first term doesn't have a number. But what variable do they all have? Which variable does every single term have? An X, okay? So we're going to take that X out from the very beginning. In my math lab, what am I typing in the answer box? An X, so I don't forget about it. So we have X. But we're taking it out of every single term. We're not factoring by grouping yet, right? We're just doing a GCF. So what's x, y, w when you remove the x? Y, w. Y, w. What is negative 5 x, w when you remove the x? 
Negative 5W. Negative 5W, right? We haven't changed our sign. What's negative 6XY when you remove the X? Negative 6Y. Negative 6Y. And what's 30X when you remove the X? 30. 30, okay? So we haven't done factor by grouping where we're looking at 2 and 2. We just said, hey, everything turns out as X. So he's going to be part of my final answer. Okay, I'm not going to worry about saying X, X, X. I just know my final answer has an X. All right, so this new polynomial starting with YW is where we're going to do the factor by grouping. So we're going to look at the first two terms and then the second two terms after that. So let's just look at those two terms. YW minus 5W. Don't even worry about the second half. YW minus 5W, what do they both share? A W. You got it. Is everyone okay with that? So we'll pull a W out in front, but when you do that, who will be left here when you pull the W out? Y. And who will be left here when you pull the W out? Minus 5. So you have Y minus 5 that remains. Is that okay so far? All right. Try to be a little fortune tellers here. I want a positive y and then a negative 5. But what do you notice? We have a negative and then a positive. So if you want to flip-flop signs, what do you have to factor out? A negative. And I don't even care what negative I, I factor out yet. I just know that it has to be negative so that my signs will match. All right. Now look at 6, 7, and 30. Some of you might need to do factor trees, but my hint to you is we want this to match the front, right? So what do I need to take out a 6y to be just left with a y? A 6. And if I took out a 6, what's 30 divided by 6? 5. So I'm just going to factor out that 6, that negative 6, okay? So we'll take out the negative 6, and we have to remind ourselves that it's division, right? Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is a positive 1, but we have a y remaining. And you put one y there. I'm okay with that. It's totally up to you. But what's a positive 30 divided by a negative 6? Negative 5. Woohoo! That's what we wanted. We wanted this y minus 5 to match that y minus 5. And again, if you don't do it exactly right the first time, it's just the opposite. Like if you got negative y plus 5, just remind yourself, oh, I just need to take a negative 6 out, not a positive 6, and go back and change that. All right, so our final answer, guys, is going to have that x, and then the y minus 5 that comes out. But when you take y minus 5 out of this, what are you left with? w, and when you take it out of this, you're left with minus 6, okay? So factor out that y minus 5, he's going to come to the front, but when I pull him out of this term, I'm left with a w, and when I pull him out of this term, I'm left with a minus 6. Is that okay? I know, it's like wanting to slide down. So y minus 5 is my common factor, so I pulled him out in front, but when I pulled him from that term, it just left a w. And when I pull them from that term, it lost minus 6. And again, if you wanted to check it, you would foil this and then distribute the x at the very end. Okay, it's like backwards. Like, you know how you take your shoes off and then your socks? But when you want to go back outside, you put your socks on and then your shoes, right? So if you the first thing we took out, it's the last thing you put back in. All right, last one. This one's actually easier than the ones we've been doing. Um, there's no giant GCS because none of them share anything, so we're just going to look at the first two terms. Okay, and look at the second two terms. Just like this. Alright, so just focus on those first two terms. What do 4 and 16 have in common? A 4, right? And you'd be like, Mama, I can't do it that quick. That's fine. Like, have spa um, scratch paper, make your factor trees, whatever you need to do. And you, you're going to eventually get comfortable enough. I mean, we've had a big summer break and all that kind of thing. So 4 is going to be the GCF. What about variables? Do they share any variables? A V. Okay. So our GCF is going to be 4V. Is that all right for those first two? Remember when you factor out a GCF, you have to say what remains. So when you're looking at these first two terms, you took out the 4, you took out the V. What's the only guy that remains? Y. The Y. You got it. We didn't change the sign because we factored out a positive. So what's negative 16 divided by 4? Throw it in your calculator if you need to. Negative. negative 4. He had a V, but we took it out. So there's no variables that remain. All right, almost there, guys. Do you notice the last half, the second half? There's not really a GCF we can take out, Y and 4, right? But aren't Y and 4 what we want? But the sign are switched? So what do we need to factor out? We factor out a 
negative 1. Remember, if they didn't have anything in common, what was the GCF? A 1. So as weird as it is, sometimes you factor out a 1 or a negative 1, okay? So we're going to factor out a negative 1 so that we're changing the sign. A negative divided by negative switches that y to a positive, which is what we want. And the 4 divided by a negative 1 switches it to a negative 4. And you're like, woohoo, look at that. I have my y minus 4s matching. Okay? Um, technically, you don't have to. Um, I would do it just so when I plot that y minus 4, I know that minus 1 is there. But, oh yeah, if you, like, up here knew when I took out that a plus b that a 1 was a placeholder, you don't really need it down there. No. That's just my tip to you to know that, hey, y minus 4 is coming out, but it was there at one point. So it's my placeholder. Okay? So notice the y minus 4 is what they share. So I'm going to have a y minus 4 right here. But when I pull them out of the first two term, 4b is what le is left. And when I pull them out of the second term, a minus 1 is there. Does that make sense? Because otherwise some people kind of close it off too quickly and they don't show that that was there at one time. Whew. Okay, before you leave, guys, I know that's a lot. Um, oh, I'll stop the cough here.